Hi guys, I want to conceptually go over what PBR texturing is. PBR texturing stands for photo based rendering, and it's a process of using flat image textures and wrapping them around 3D objects in order to give your objects or your 3D objects a certain level of detail. And I'm not going to go over every type of image you can wrap around your object, but I'm gonna go through the basic one so that you can get a sense of the process. So if I scroll in to my object over here, you can see I have this mossy rock texture and you can see it's a pretty convincing texture. You can see the rocks kind of pushing out here and, and the moss really sells itself. And in order to, to get this texture, I needed five different maps all wrapped around this object. Um, and so the first one I used is the roughness texture. The roughness texture dictates how and where shininess will be on your object. So if you look at the image right here that dictates the shininess, you can see that it's a black and white image and that it doesn't really correspond much to this colored image to our left. And the reason for that is that this type of image uses black and white data in order to tell the renderer how to react. So to describe that a little bit better, you can see we have this gradient here. And Blender uses black and white images and black and white gradients a lot in order to feed it data. And essentially what a black and white image is telling Blender is that anywhere it's black or close to black, it's going to be either 0% or close to zero, depending on how dark it is. And anywhere that's white or close to white is going to be 100% or around 100%, again, depending on how bright it is. And it has the whole spectrum between 0% and 100% to feed it data. And so you can see if we look at this object here, everywhere it's very, very shiny and corresponds to the part of our image that's darker because black means 0%, which means it's close to 0% roughness. But everywhere it's less shiny is going to be a brighter part of our image because anything that is brighter or white is 100% or close to 100%. So pay attention in the future to these black and white maps because you'll notice them a lot and they're they're very useful for a lot of different things. Now the next map I used is a normal map and you can kind of get a sense for what it does just by looking at this preview here. It appears to essentially change the displacement of our model but you'll notice one thing specifically which is that if we zoom close to our model the profile of this flat spherical object doesn't change. And so one way you can think of how the normal map works is it's essentially adding makeup to contour our model to make it look more rough or displaced than it actually is. Now, if we look at our texture here, you can see it's, it's not like the black or white texture or the base color texture that we saw before. It has very non-corresponding colors added. These colors correspond to very precise information. Now, if we scroll down here to this cube here, you can see each one of these sides of the cube have a different color. And each of these colors correspond to the direction that the face is pointing towards. That's how a normal map works. Each of these colors are telling our end model that that part of the model is facing in a certain direction. Now, understanding the technical reasons for why a normal map work isn't integral to your understanding of PBR texturing, so I'm not gonna belabor the point, but just know that a normal map will make it look like your object's displaced without changing any of the geometry. Contrary to that, we have the displacement map. You can see that the displacement map is using that black and white texture we talked about before, but it's using that to literally displace the mesh of our object. Now you can see if we zoom in close that the geometry is being changed. Now if we go one more to the right, you can see the bump texture 
is the exact same, the map is the exact same as a displacement channel, but the type of effect is more similar to the normal channel, where if we zoom in close, the actual profile of the object isn't being changed, but the map is essentially contouring the object in order to make it appear so. Now, each of these three maps essentially solve the same problem, but they each have their pros and cons. Your displacement map is always going to be the most detailed and the highest quality because it's actually deforming your mesh. However, it is intensive on your computer's rendering power. And so it's often hard to apply a displacement map to everything in your scene. So you have to pick and choose what components you want to be most detailed. The normal and bump map are quite similar. Normal maps are harder to create generally, but typically when you download or create your own PBR textures, they're included. Normal maps capture light much more accurately than a bump map does, which is just using black and white detail. And so as you're using these different maps, if anything needs a lot of detail and you can spare rendering power, I would always use a displacement map. However, if you have limited rendering power and want the cleanest and most accurate effect, I would choose a normal map. Now to close things off pretty quickly, the last texture I added as a PBR texture is a base color. Now this is probably the most self-explanatory image texture. All it is is dictating the pigments on your model and where to put them. And it's probably the first thing you notice on this PBR texture. So I wanted to keep this pretty short and sweet, uh, just so you understood the concept of PBR texturing. Again, it's essentially taking image textures with different image data and wrapping them around your 3D objects in order to render roughness, displacement, base color, and more. So have a great day. See you later. Bye.